Okay, Eric, we go back to Belgium now, where authorities are working around the clock to piece together information on the deadliest attack in its history, a massive manhunt leading to the capture of a third suspect in the airport bombing. For more now, we go to uh, Jim Woolsey. Uh, Jim, by the way, is the chairman of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and former director of the CIA, Mr. Woolsey. So good to have you this, uh, this evening here. Good to be with you. Absolutely. So now the latest info coming out of Brussels is that the terrorist are targeting nuclear plants there. I mean, how vulnerable are those nuclear plants? And also, how likely is it for these terrorists to make a dirty bomb, which is reportedly another plant of theirs? Uh, the, the dirty bomb, I'm afraid, if they get their hands on radioactive material, let's say lightly enriched uranium uh, of the sort that would be used in a power plant, not heavily enriched that would be used in a, in a nuclear weapon. But if they get their hands on that, then just having it uh, blown up, to, to, uh, the material blown up uh, by uh, an explosion could spread that material around a wide enough area that uh, nobody would want to work there for many, many years. And uh, so it's a real threat uh, if they can get hold of enriched material. Some of it is uh, used in medical uh, uses, and so uh, one has to be very, very cautious in controlling it. And uh, the uh, uh, Belgians have not been right at the, the, the top of the grading heap uh, in, in doing that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a problem. And what about that dirty bomb, the possibilities? Did you say that that's a possibility? Yeah, that's, that's what a dirty bomb is, essentially, is a radioactive material exploded, right. but, not, but not, not, uh, not exploded in such a way as to have a nuclear reaction and, and have a detonation of the weapon. It simply spreads the material around. I beg your, I beg your pardon, because I was thinking about the nuclear plants, and there was uh, reports of them going well, to cause damage there in the dirty. That, that could be a problem too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for example, if the electricity for the plant right. is attacked, he, and sometimes that's inside the fence of the plant. Sometimes it's outside. But if it's outside and easily attack, then uh, you could contribute uh, as a terrorist to taking that out and having uh, things get very hot very quickly and uh, melt down and, and so forth. It's, right. it's not that this can't be defended against, but one has to do it and do it thoroughly and do it carefully and do red team it and so forth. Okay, thank you uh, for that clarification. So I want to ask you now, do you have any knowledge of how quickly the counter-terror agencies in those countries can improve communications to prevent some of these terrorists from slipping through the cracks? Um, hiding in plain sight and possibly minimizing future attacks. I, I don't have a good feel for it. Uh, some of those countries uh, do this sort of thing very well, Britain, for example. Right. Uh, others uh, uh, have historically not. Uh, I mean, Belgium, it was kind of amazing to all of us to learn that mm -hmm. they weren't uh, uh, conducting any raids uh, after 9 p.m. Uh, Why well, <laughs> everybody needs eight hours sleep, I guess, if they're going to work on counterterrorism. I don't know. But that sort of uh, uh, thing is not all that uncommon in some of the other countries in Europe, uh, not, not uh, really going to the mat, mat completely all the time in order to protect uh, your society. And uh, uh, the other countries, a number of them, are going to have to uh, get moving. Uh, and, and before we go, if you, if you could provide a, a short answer on this, if you would, Mr. Woolsey. Sure. You know, People watching, Americans are asking, could this happen in the U.S.? Uh, are our intelligence gathering agencies communicating and cross-checking documents, alerts, emails, and the such to, um, to avoid uh, a communication snafu like what happened uh, surrounding the attacks in Belgium? Uh, I, I think we are good, a bit spotty, but good. But we have to make some decisions of the sort that was discussed earlier about New York. Uh, the Giuliani uh, uh, approach that was used right after 9-11 was considerably uh, more effective than what uh, Mayor de Blasio is doing now. And one has to make decisions like that. Uh, what are you going to do and how are you going to do it in order to make it less likely that uh, someone can come together in a terrorist group and do uh, really horrible things. So I hear you saying that public safety uh, should trump um, political correctness. Uh, I think virtually anything should always trump political correctness, but uh, I think it should. Uh, yes, I, yes, I agree. Thank you, Mr. Woolsey. Jim Woolsey, thank you very much. Former director of the CIA.